Dr. Beeky, the next question is for you, and you have spoken and written about uh, the subject of family worship, and if you were to instruct pastors in this, in this congregation this evening how to further that cause within their congregation, especially the men, to lead their families in family worship, what advice would you give them? Yeah, that's a great question. Thank you for it. The first advice I give is they've got to be absolutely convinced of the importance of it themselves. So I'm a pastor, I'm a theological teacher, I'm an author, et cetera, et cetera, but the most important thing I do every single day is family worship. That's the center of my life. I fail here, I feel like I failed everywhere. Second thing a pastor needs to do is he needs to convey to his people what the Scripture says about family worship. And I don't have time right now to, to lay that out before, just to say this. Scripture basically says we should do four things every day with our family. We should read the Bible. We should talk to our children about the Bible. We should pray with them. And Psalm 118, verse 15, we should sing with them daily the tents, in the tents of the righteous. So those four things go on in family worship every day. And once we grasp the importance of this, that every single day we're talking to our children, at least once a day, and you multiply that times from zero to 20 years of age, you've got 7,000 opportunities to talk to your children about manhood and and, and, and womanhood and, and, and everything in life from the scriptures. And so talking about uh, intimate things, giving them the birds and bees and so on, comes very naturally if you every single day are talking to them about the whole counsel of God. So it, it, it has this huge benefit of having open communication with your children. You need to convince your congregation of that. Preach a sermon on it. More than one sermon. Refer to it in your sermons. Uh, on family visitation, if your church does that, where the elders go out into the church, into the families and ask questions, or you do it as a pastor, ask the fathers if they're doing it. Help them do it. Um, give them a good short book on which to do it. My little book on family worship actually is so better than anything else I've ever done in my life, I think. Um, put that in their hands. Ask them to read it. It's a one-hour read or other books like it. And then... Go model it for them. Um, if their families aren't doing it, just say, come on over and have supper at my home and, and let them be included in your family worship. That's the way the Puritans used to do it. They bring the families into their home, they model it for them, the father would go back and do it. The father wanted more help. The minister said from the pulpit, I'll come to supper at any of your houses and lead your family in family worship to show you how to do it. So that's another thing. You can go to their house and show them how to do it. But the main thing is that you make sure every single father is doing family worship. That's part of your supervision in the church of Jesus Christ. And that's absolutely critical. Did you know that in the 1640s at the Westminster Assembly, the Puritans decided that if a father was not engaging in daily, serious, prolonged family worship with his family every day, he would be admonished and then censored. And if he refused to change, he'd be forbidden to come to the Lord's Supper. That's how critical this was in the Puritan mind. And we've lost that. And, and, you know, life is so incredibly busy. And we have all good intentions. We're going to talk to our children about serious things. But before you know it, the whole week is gone. And family worship is a way of gathering around the Word every single day, bringing them issues of life and death. So your conscience knows you need to do it. The Bible commands you. The Lord Jesus is honored by it. We must do family worship. Thank you. Can I just ask a follow-up? I wonder if uh, maybe Dr. Beakey, maybe someone else could just give, some father out here is thinking, okay, I've got to do this. How would you tell him to do it tonight or tomorrow? If he just really wants to start this, how should he get started? What should it look like, just very practically? Yep, he'd go home, he'd say to his wife and his children, I'm sorry, God forgive me, you forgive me, please, I've been neglecting this. We need to start. And what we do is we start, we'll just start reading the Bible. You each have a Bible on your lap. You read these 10 verses, you each read a couple of verses, we share in the reading, and then the Father just talks about two or three or four practical lessons from those verses, and then you pray together, the Father prays the beginning of family worship, each of the children take turns praying at the end of family worship, and then you sing. And uh, start out small, start out with a five-minute family worship, and build it up to maybe 15 minutes. If you have young children, if you have older children, maybe 20 minutes. 
And uh, just say to the children, this is non-negotiable. This is as important as eating. Um, if your son doesn't want to sing, you say, well, that's quite simple. No singing, no food. <laughs> and they'll sing. Dr. Beaky, could I, could I get you to share the two-minute version of your personal experience with your family, your mom and dad in family worship? Hmm. Well, what happened when my, when my parents had their 50th anniversary is all five of us children agreed to speak a word of thank you to both my father and to my mother. And we wouldn't, wouldn't talk ahead of time about what we were going to say. But the most important thing we wanted to thank them for, and we actually taped all this, and it was just incredible because all five of us thanked my mother for her secret prayer life because it was just awesome. And all five of us thanked my dad for, for family worship, um, particularly the Sunday night family worship. My dad had a special family worship on Sunday night where he read Pilgrim's Progress to us every single week. And he'd, he'd read for about 30 minutes, but we could interrupt him and ask questions and often he'd set the book down, and he'd just be weeping, talking to us about how the Holy Spirit leads the people of God. And I remember when I was converted, like I was 14 or 15, I would stay up with him, sometimes till midnight and beyond, just he and I talking about the Spirit's leading in the life of a Christian. We'd ask him, what does that mean in the house of interpreter? What does it mean, Mr. Talkative, talking with him? How do, how do Christian and faithful relate here? What does that mean spiritually? And I learned so much experientially and practically about vital Christianity from my dad in family worship, it, it, it formed, my, formed my life. And my brothers, uh, my sisters, maybe to a little lesser degree, can say the same thing. Amen. Thank you. 